let's do some problems. I want to just kind of pick problems all throughout the whole entire chapter. So like we did, I think, uh, let's start with some naming problems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, copy and paste them into uh, that smooth draw program. It's a lot easier, I think, to kind of do that program. Um, so let's take these two, oops, these two problems. I'll pop it in there and then I'll, this, there's actually a few problems. Oh, where is it? Um, I think there's another one like, yeah, that one right there. This one right there. Let's do these. So there's three different ones. Um, let's practice naming them. <clears throat> so I'll give you some time to work on them. Everybody see them okay? I know they're a little small on my end, but uh, you guys might be able to see them okay. Can you make them a little bit bigger? Yeah, I'll try. Let me see. It doesn't really allow me. I can't really expand them either. That's the one thing about the program. Well, what I could do, I'll have to re... I have to make them bigger here and then copy them over again. So I'm okay with that. You know, let's, let's do this. Um, And then just do, just do, <laughs> do this. You have to do all of them. Do this one. Is that better? You guys able to see them better? That one and that one. Much better. Yep, no problem. I'll just see if I can fix these. Okay, let's I get to erase it. It's the one downfall about this program. I can't figure out how to select a whole bunch and just delete it. Looks like some of the people are done. <clears throat> um, hey Morgan, how are you? Reagan, how you guys doing? Luke, Anna, Ashley, Kelly, Jacob. All right, let's go with this. I'm going to start with the carboxylic acids first. Um, so we should learn about those first. So I think they're easier than you too. So you start counting from the side closest to the carboxylic acid. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two, three, four, five. All right, and we have a bromine on the four and the five. So four, five, dibromo, uh, pentanoic acid. All right. Next one, <clears throat> same type of thing. Start at the carbon with the acid. That's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, four, five, six. And then we have this is a substituent. So three ethyl hexanoic acid. Hexanoic acid. Right. And remember, I don't have to say one oic acid or anything because the carboxylic acid is always at carbon one. 
All right, and then the ester, so remember the ester, we talked about this yesterday, you have to first name the group hanging off of the oxygen. So we first have to name this group. So that is an isopropyl group. So you just name whatever the group is. All right, then you name the rest of it the way that you would normally name a longest chain. So this is carbon one. It's always the carbon that has the carbonyl, carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. And then I have this as my substituent hanging off of the ring. I mean, off of the longest chain. So isopropyl, three phenyl. Remember when an aromatic ring is a substituent, you call it a phenyl. Um, oh, yeah, I don't need that. Okay. So pro, propanoate. Isopropyl 3 propanoate, 3 phenyl propanoate. Alright, so the isopropyl tells the reader there's an isopropyl group attached to the oxygen. So you have the oxygen and then you have the isopropyl group. And then you have three carbons because it's prop. So one, two, three, and then off of the third, you have a phenyl ring. All right, does that make sense? You know, let's do, <clears throat> let's do this. Let's see if I can, mm. I like the names to structures too. They don't really have any of those. It would have been nice to do one of those for an ester. These are all acids, acids, anions. Um, you know what? I'll just give you one. Yeah, let's see if I can find something here. Um, Yeah, I'll just make up one. <laughs> That'd be a lot quicker. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to give you the stru uh, the name. Oh, I want to do the name. Um, yeah, that's what I want to do. I wanted to give you the name and then go straight to the structure. I would have to draw the structure first and then do the name. And I'll just come up with one. Like I said, let me write something down real quick. Mm. I'll give you one that you'll probably see more on the exam. So let me see. All right, I'm gonna have to. So let me type this out. Uh, just gonna type something. I'll just write it here. So, cyclohexyl really give you a good one. S um, four bromo. Three three dichloro five methyl. Oh yeah, bring it on, bring it on, Garber. Cyclohexyl three S four bromo three three dichloro five methyl hexanoate. You know that's something I'll give you on the exam too, right? giving it to you. All right, just draw the structure. This time you just got to draw the structure. Usually it's easier to draw structures.
And again, uh, just let me know <clears throat> in the chat box when you guys are ready. Alright, let's go over this. So, how I like to do this is I like to do the, uh, I kind of start here and work that way. It's kind of the best way to go from name to structure. So I have six carbons. So, um, put that as the carbon nail right there. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, at the third carbon, I have two chlorines. That's a carbon right there. Let me make that look a little better. Um, let's see, at the five, one, two, three, four, five, five, I have a methyl, four, I have a bromo, and it's S. So what I like to do, I think I, we talked about this when we did the stereochemistry chapter, is I just put the bromine coming out knowing that the, that the lowest priority is in the back, check to see if I have the correct um, uh, arrangement. If I have the opposite, then I just change this. So this would be priority one, this would be two, this would be three. I'm going counterclockwise, so that is the S. And then on the ester, you have a cyclohexyl coming off of here. That's a horrible looking cyclohexyl. There we go. Does that look about what you guys got? Yours might have been flipped around or something, which is fine. Um, just uh, so this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. All right, good. Yep, Ashley and Jacob both agree. All right, good. Good naming. Those really, you know, like I said, the esters and the um, acids are really the ones that the ones that I care more about. All right, so let's go on. Let's do some reactions now. Mm. All right, I kind of like, uh, actually, let's do, so 39. Um, let me try this for a second. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Oh, let's get this out of the way. Oh, there we go. Better. Okay, um, I kind of like 39. Um, forty-one. Uh, let's we'll do thirty-nine. We'll do thirty-nine first. And again, let me know when you guys are ready. This is what we talked about yesterday when we look at reactivity um, of, of these reactions. We talked about which of these leaving groups is the best. So notice they all have carbonyls, but we're looking at this part of it right here, the part that's attached to the carbonyl. Okay. So I'll rank the following. An increase, let's see, uh, order, uh, compounds in order of the reactivity towards nucleophilic Rank the following compounds in order of their reactivity. So uh, that's confusing. I don't know if they mean most reactive first or second or last. I'll just tell you. So this one should be the most reactive. So I'll put this as one as the most reactive. The second most reactive is the anhydride. That's the anhydride. That's the second most reactive. And then the ester is the third most reactive. And then the amide. All right. So, so remember we talked about acid chlorides are more reactive than the anhydrides. And hydrides, sometimes a lot of people have a hard time seeing those, but that's what basically the hydride is. And then you have the ester. And then you have the amide. Right? Right? 
Are there any questions on that? All right, let's get into reaction. Um, let's see here. I think I think we should do all of these. What do you guys think? So the important thing to do is make sure you understand what the functional group is. Okay, so when you look at it, make sure you realize what the functional group is, especially like this right here. This is uh, something that we've never seen in the condensed form. So make sure you understand. So you see how it says like pyridine? I'm going to erase these actually. These are the solvents. Like if it says, you know, like pyridine is a solvent, um, that's the only one that's a solvent. Other than that, everything else is actually Okay, but make sure you you look very carefully at this structure because that's a different condensed structure that we've seen before. All right, so very carefully draw out these structures. If you see this COCl, draw out what that looks like. Okay, the same thing here, CO and H two. Um, that's how uh, it, it, I think it actually helps drastically to actually understand what the actual reaction is telling you once you actually um, draw out the actual structures. All right, I'm going to erase all these question marks here. All right, so I'll give you a little bit of time, like 10 to 15 minutes to figure out what these reactions are. Um, again, when you guys are done, uh, let me know um, so that we're ready to go. And once about half the class is done, uh, we'll start on it. All right, good. Um, looks like you guys want to go through it. Okay, so the first one, so this group is an ester. All right, so you have a cyclohexyl. I'm going to put CY for cyclohexyl. That's kind of the shorthand for cyclohexyl. And then you have a ester with an ethyl group. Okay. Now, <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a little confusing because you might be asking, is this one equivalent or is it two equivalents? Remember yesterday in class we talked about, depending on how many equivalents you add, you get a different compound. Now, this is hinting to you that it's two equivalents. And how do I know it's hinting to you? Because you're adding acid as a second step. When you add one equivalent, you don't add acid because the one equivalent stops at the ketone. Remember, the acid is used to protonate the O negative that you form on this after you've added this the second equivalent of Grignard. So if you weren't sure, as is asking one or two, on the exam, I will clearly say one equivalent or two equivalents. But the way you know it's two is because of the fact that I add acid. If I only added one equivalent, then I wouldn't have this at all. Okay, so in case you were wondering about that. So your final product is going to be a tertiary alcohol. So I'll write it here on the side here. So you should have a cyclohexyl. You'll have your oxygen. That'll be H. And you'll have an ethyl group here. And you'll have an ethyl group here. All right? Does that make sense? In case you were confused how many equivalents, um, this is how you know it's, it's two equivalents. If you only had one equivalent, so the, the, the reaction would basically say this, just to show you what... If there's one equivalent, we talked about it, so I want to make sure that we, you would not have all those numbers. You would just have the Grignard, and your product would be the ethyl ketone. Look like that. Okay, so hopefully that, that clarifies that a little bit. In, ca in case you guys had a question. It doesn't look like anyone had a question, but in case you were wondering, that's what it is. All right? Okay, uh, the next one, I don't think we particularly talked about this reaction in class, but it is on the video in the chapter. LAH basically adds hydrogen hydrides onto this carbon, and it gets rid of these pi bonds. So you basically form the amine. All right, so you have 
Um, I'm not going to write the hydrogens in just because it, it's going to take like too much time. And then you'll have, a, I'll put it here, CH2, NH2. So that's what your product should be. You should have all the hydrogens in there, unless you do this, um, I have an extra carbon in there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So two, three, four, five, plus that. Okay. If you have any questions, please stop and, and, and ask. All right, this this group right here is an acid chloride. Um, so what you have is you have a carbonyl up here, and then you have it attached to your CL. So that's an acid chloride. You add a nitrogen to it. Basically, this comes in, kicks up your pi bonds, tetrahedral intermediate, kicks back down, kicks out your chlorine. Right? You have to grab one of these hydrogens off of it, too. So you will have... That will be your product. So remember, if you add the weak form of it, one of the hydrogens gets plucked off. All right, you have to remember to remove one of the hydrogens. Okay, questions? Okay, this one is an ester, a Fischer esterification. You have a carboxylic acid and you have an alcohol. So you're going to form an ester on that comp, on that carbon, on that group right there. So you'll have the methyl. And then, so it doesn't change any of the stereochemistry because none of the chemistry is happening to the, those actual carbons. So I think you'll still have your hydrogens. So that would form an ester. LAH, notice we have an ester right here, so it's going to reduce off that ester. So your final product will be double bond CH, uh, so that's the CH, and then you'll have a CH3, CH, CH3, CH2, CH2OH. So if this carbon right here becomes an alcohol, this gets cleaved off. So one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, plus your OH and the methyl group right there. So if you want to put it in the skeletal structure, that's what it'll look like. Alright. This, like I was telling you, make sure you write this out. This looks weird. Notice you have two oxygens here and one here. This is an anhydride. So the way that looks is CH3, and then you have a CO2, so you have a carbonyl and then an oxygen, then you have the carbon, and the other oxygen is the other carbonyl, and then you have the CH3. So let's call this carbon one, that's carbon one. This carbon is carbon two, that's carbon two. All right, so I'll move the chat box here. So your final product, so, the, so basically the oxygen is going to add to one of these carbons, kick up, tetrahedral intermediate, kick up, and kick this whole entire group out. That's the whole group. A lot of people sometimes have problems with the anhydrides under, you know, knowing which of the groups actually get plucked off. You also will pluck this hydrogen off. So that should be your product. You basically made the ester. Okay, so really just this portion of it gets attached onto my oxygen. All right, make sense? For this compound, this is an amide. So the way this looks is you have a carbonyl here, and then you have that bonded to the NH2. So LAH, LAH basically gets rid of carbonyls. That's what it does. Over here, it did the same thing. Got rid of the carbonyl to give you the alcohol. Here, it's going to get rid of the carbonyl to give you an NH2. So your final product. Will be that. And then lastly, carboxylic acid plus SO2 makes the acid chloride. So that's all you get in that reaction. Okay. Any questions on those?
Hey, Steve, I had a question. Sure. Um, it's on C. Uh, the answer key mm -hmm. for the homework is using two equivalents of yeah. uh, methyl amide. And right. when I did it, I just ended up with the NH2. Mm -hmm. But I see your mechanisming. You're ending up with the NHCH3. Can you explain that, please? Um, so in the answer key, wh wh what do they have? In the answer key for C, it's listed as uh, two equivalents of CH3 and H2. Oh, here. here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is, yeah, let me um, write this I'll write it down here. So I didn't go over this really in class because it's not a, it's not a huge deal, um, but it's okay. I'll talk about it. So your nitrogen attacks. All right, so that comes in, you form the tetrahedral intermediate, and then it kicks back out and, and kicks out your chlorine. What you actually form is the protonated nitrogen form of that compound. And this has a plus charge because nitrogens um, is basically a base. So that hydrogen is still attached onto that nitrogen. Chlorine is not a strong enough of a base in order to pluck it off. So that second equivalent of the methylamine acts as a base to pluck off that extra hydrogen. So that's why you, when you make amides, you usually add, add two equivalents where the first equivalent actually re reacts, and the second equivalent is just used as a base in order to pluck off that extra hydrogen. Does that make sense, Luke? Yep, yep. So, you know, is it really that imperative you show it? If you want to, that, that, that's fine. Um, uh, you actually do need like that second equivalent there, but it's not in order to form the product. It's just, uh, um, again, it it's just used as as a base. And, and I don't have to add like two equivalents to this. I can add this and, th and then I can add another molecule of, of a base. Um, if you saw in this one on F, it had the word, had pyridine there. Well, pyridine is, this is, a, the structure of pyridine. This is acting as a base. So in this re reaction, I have this hydrogen that's left over after it attacks. So I kind of have this as a molecule, F O with an H here, and that's attached onto that group like that. And I and I and I, I still have this hydrogen here, this acidic hydrogen. So I, I need a base in order to pluck that hydrogen off. That's what the pyridine is acting as in the reaction. It's acting as a base in order to pluck off that hydrogen at the very end. So again, I, I don't talk a lot about this because again, it's, just, it's more information that we don't need to know, but um, if it helps you guys in, in understanding everything, I'm, I'm fine in going over it. Okay, and again, here's a perfect example of how the, in the book, he only talks about one equivalent, and he doesn't really like, talk about this step, where in the answer guide, the wife does have it in there. So hopefully that kind of explains it a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, good. Any other questions? Let's do this one.
Also, show me a mechanism. Do the mechanism of this as well. Kind of kill two birds with one stone on that one. Okay. All right, I'm going to go on mute. I'll be back in a second. Or I'll give you about, yeah, like five to ten minutes on this. Let me know when you guys are done. The Fisher esterification is you take a carboxylic acid and you add it to an alcohol in the presence of acid, strong acid, and you basically substitute the OH for an OR. Substitute the OH for an OR. Okay, so this group right here substitutes for this group right here. Okay. So in this case, you have an alcohol on this end of the molecule, and you have the carboxylic acid on the other end. So it's basically it's the same reaction, except these R groups just happen to be attached to each other. It's the only thing that is different. So I'm going to flip this molecule around so it looks like this. So you have your carboxylic acid group, all right, which is this. This is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. So here's carbon 2, here's carbon 3, here's carbon 4, and here's carbon 5. All right? So see how I'm trying to make it look exactly like this example here? We have the carboxylic acid next to the alcohol. Here's your carboxylic acid next to the alcohol. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is this group right here, right, is going to substitute for this group right here. So just basically attach this oxygen to the carbon and get rid of the OH. So carbonyl, CH2, 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 and then that's where your O is attached to there. So it's, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. So to make it look pretty, you want to make it a little, you know, look a little better. That's what your final product is. I guess that looks pretty. <laughs> looks prettier, I guess. All right, so that's what the product is. Now I ask you to show the mechanism, but first I want to see if there's any questions about how I actually get this, how I get the product. Do you have to write out the structure in that shape? Well, no, but it, you just have to make sure that it's a six-membered ring. I mean, all I'm doing is I'm writing out and making sure that it, it just looks good. But yeah, it has to be a six-membered ring, um, and you have to have it in the ester. I mean, how you, I mean, if you drew it like this, that's fine. If you drew it upside down, then that's fine. Um, is anyone else audio not working? Yeah. Um, is anyone else having audio issues? Garrett is having audio issues again. No, everything's fine. Yeah. It was for a bit. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, let me see. Um, what did Ashley say? Okay, you said okay. Okay. All right, cool. That's what I understand. Okay. okay, so now the mechanism part. Let's just undo all this. Oh, no, actually, I learned how to erase it now. Well, you guys were doing one of your... Um, problems, I learned how to erase all this. Do that. What was that? And then what did I do from there? And then I forgot what I did. <laughs> oh, it was the race. No, forgot what I did. I'm going to get rid of it now. Oh, I remember. I hit the word clear. There it is. Okay. 
So the mechanism, um, just to make things a little easier, just because I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do like a little scoop like that. Okay, instead of drying out each carbon individually, this way it'll make it go a little bit easier. All right, so the first step of these mechanisms, remember, is you always you have to add acid as one of your re, as your catalyst. That's the first step. Second step is this attacks the carbon, and then your pi bond goes up. Of the OH and then this OH, let's actually do this a different color so we can follow where everything is. Not in green. All right, well, that's looking a little weird, but okay, do it like that. And then this oxygen here is going to pluck off that hydrogen and neutralize the oxygen in the ring. So that oxygen in the ring now, ring, that's the oxygen in the ring. That's attached to the carbon that has the OH. And now that OH that grabbed the hydrogen and that. Okay. Um, Autumn, it says that, that you raised your hand. Did you mean to hit that, or uh, was that by accident? What's that? I didn't mean to. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> All right. And then the lone pair. Uh, I'm running out. It's hard to get room here. Let's try. This is going to pop down and kick out the water group. And then the water is going to come by and pluck out the hydrogen. And then we'll give you the final product, which we said is determined is the six milligram. Okay. So uh, the same mechanism that we went over yesterday. That Fischer esterification, but this was just intramolecular. You know, I always have a lot of these types of problems. On the last exam, I had this problem. It was an SN2 reaction. We had a, I think it was a chlorine on one side and a whole bunch of carbons and then like a nitrogen here. And you have a minus. I said a base, like show me what the product is. So this just kind of closes up onto itself, SN2. So the final product should have been this. I don't know if you guys remember that problem. It was, it was a homework problem also. Um, but you know, I like these intramolecular things. All right, any questions on that one? All right, so like that one. So a lot of these are still homework problems. You guys can do these online. Here we go, synthesis. All right, good. Let's get to some synthesis. Papers and some of those. All right, so let's do. Okay, how can you prepare, prepare acetophenone? I'll give you the structure of acetophenone so you don't have to look it up. But it's basically methyl phenyl ketone. So you have an, uh, a phenyl ring on one side, and it's a ketone, and you got a methyl on the other side. 
So it's saying, how do you synthesize this compound starting from these compounds? So from benzonitrile, bromobenzene, methylbenzoate, and then from benzene. You might have to use reactions from other chapters too. So how do you synthesize this compound from each of these? Okay. So, also, see if you can come up with more than one reaction, but at least try to use a reaction from this chapter. Because uh, there's ways that you can make this from other chapters, but try to use um, at least one reaction from this chapter. All right, or chapter nine. All right, I'll give you a little bit of time. Over a few, let me actually erase all this. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start with this compound with benzene, because the way that you go from bromine, you can kind of go from the benzene. So I'll show you all those possible routes. Uh, but let me erase all this first, and then we will we go from there. Okay, so let me first show you benzene, and there's several different ways. So one real quick, easy way, which is just Chapter 4. So if you just do a Chapter 4 reaction, that's why I told you guys don't just do Chapter 4, um, because uh, you can just do a Chapter 4 reaction, which is the Friedel-Crafts acylation. So if you did that, awesome, good job. But on the exam, I'm going to clearly say you must use a reaction from chapter 9 or chapter 10 or something. Okay, but that works. All right, another way is by making the bromobenzene, all right, which is from chapter 4, which you, you have to do this reaction in order to get like something on here. Okay, so you can get a bromine on there. Okay. And then you have to make the ester. So there's different ways to do it. One way is to turn this into the Grignard. And then add one equivalent of the of an ester. Okay, that has a group. So it has, has the methyl and the carbonyl, which is that part of it. So this is like the reaction that we saw. Again, if you add one equivalent, it stops at the ketone. If you add the two equivalents, it gets the tertiary alcohol. Okay, so that's a way to do it, which again uses these, um, these re reactions. Uh, this one is from chapter 10. Another way would be to take the Grignard and just add the aldehyde to it. So this would be using a chapter nine reaction. And then the second step is adding acid and you make the alcohol. So, I mean, the point of doing this is to show you, you have lots of different ways of making that same compound. And then taking this and oxidizing it either with like PCC or PI. Okay, so that's three different ways uh, in order to do this. Um, they want to come up with a different way that they want to share, or if someone has the answer key, I'm curious as to what the answer key says. They probably either say the ester route or the um, or the PCC route. Uh, I don't. I don't think I have a copy of the answer guide with me in my house. So if someone wants to go off mute or something, I'm fine with that. Or oh, actually, you know what? I have access to it. What about that? I have. Oh, I got like five back on. So the acylation was in the book. Those. Sellouts. That's cheap. Uh, let's see. Kelly said magnesium and then the CH3 to chapter 10. Okay, good. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the whole point is to learn the new stuff. Let's see. Let me find the book answers. Uh, what is this? Chapter 10, right? I'm just curious. <clears throat> well, I, 
I guess you guys already told me, so I don't need to waste time on that. Okay. So as far as the Bromo benzene, notice I made it right here. So this would be the way to do the, the Bromo benzene as well. Okay. So, yeah, so Kelly did the, the Grignard. And then the Chapter 3 reaction. And then the Chapter 10 reaction. Okay. Yeah, so you did the Chapter 10. So you did the ester. Because this would be the Chapter 9 way of doing it. Yeah, okay, good. Yep, that's perfect. That's a that's a great way to do it. I mean, you can also use like the CRO3 or the Na2, CR207 here as well because you're forming a ketone. Okay, so that takes care of the benzene and the bromo benzene. All right, I'm trying to think if there's another different way of doing it. I think that's really the, the main ways of doing those. All right, next. Now that I know how to do this. Shortcut for the clear. Control delete. Alright. So now we're really going to be able to. Oh, yeah. Now we're clicking. Alright. Okay, so the benzyl, the benzyl nitrile. Let's look at that one. <clears throat> oh, there's actually another way from the benzene that you do it which actually is kind of a way to do it from the methyl benzoate. So I'll show that when we get to it. And this makes this. Again, there are several ways, but the main way which we, uh, we've learned, you can actually do this in one step, all right, which is adding a Grignard and then working it up in water and acid. All right, that was, let me see if I can find, I think that was one of the last reactions we talked about yesterday. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Here, we'll do this. I guess I have it. I'm looking at my book, but I technically have the book right here. Let me show you this, this reaction. Oh, here it is. It's the very last reaction. Take a nitrile plus Grignard and acid, and you make a ketone. All right, and the carbonyl, I'm sorry, the R group that comes from the Grignard is what ends up on the carbonyl. So that reaction right there is, is the reaction doing here. Okay. Uh, the other way you can do it, if you, that's one step. But another way uh, is, if you remember, if you take this and add either acid or sodium hydroxide or something, you can turn it into the carboxylic acid. All right. All right. Remember, so it's this reaction right here. So there are two ways of doing it. You can either do like the sodium hydroxide as step one and acid as step two, or if you just do 100% in acid, it will work as well. So you can do either way. So let's actually j just be consistent and keep it like how the book does. All right. And then you can turn this into the ester. And then add one equivalent of the Grignard. Okay. So you are turning the nitrile into a carboxylic acid, and then you're taking the carboxylic acid, turning it into an ester, and then you're doing the one equivalent Grignard, which remember adds in and, and it'll kick that out and it makes the ketone. Okay, so those are two possibilities. Anybody have something different, or is that what you guys had? Uh, Curious has the uh, answer book. Yep. Yeah, hey, Kelly, which one did you have? Did you have the uh, one reaction or the number two route? Which way did you do it? Number two. Just curious. Oh, you did both. Oh, good. Nice job. Very nice job. What does the book have as the uh, answer for anyone who's looking at the book? Ashley. Route one, okay. Oh, okay, route one is, is the book answer. Okay, all right, that works. 
Um, and then C is starting from methyl benzoate, which is that compound right there. See how this is all kind of all ties together? That's kind of why I did it, so I don't have to do a whole other one. So basically, just take this and add the Grignard to it, which I'm, I'm sure is how the book how the book did it. I mean, you, you could also just take this and reduce it down if you wanted to to the alcohol and oxidize it to the aldehyde, add the Grignard, and oxidize again. I mean, again, it's just um, it's just a lot of steps. Book did one and two from yours. Okay. All right. All right, any questions on that one? All right, um, good. I'm glad that we got through a bunch of these. Um, tomorrow, I definitely want to do some more of these. Um, and then I'm going to bring out uh, more complicated synthesis problems as well. Um, I think we finished right here. There's a bunch of synthesis. There's 56, 57. Um, so I'm thinking of, of doing all those as well. Okay, um, other thing I think we talked about yesterday is uh, I just wanted to remind you about this, um, where is it? it's the president is having a, a talk again. So he's going to talk a lot, a lot about su summer school. Oh, it's at 2 o'clock. Did he change that? that? That was at 3, right? I think that used to be at 3. I think he changed that. Um, so he's going to, maybe not, I don't remember, but he's going to talk about summer school, I believe, um, because that's kind of a big thing. Um, so if anyone's taking summer school, you definitely want to go to that. There are big changes for summer school. A lot of classes are going to be canceled. Um, it's basically going 100% online. So if you signed up for classes, I don't know if you've gotten phone calls yet, but um, basically you're going to be dropped from everything, and then you have to re-sign up to uh, our, our FRCC online uh, because nothing is going to be on campus. Um, and uh, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be completely online. Um, so uh, that's going to change a lot. A lot of our science classes have been canceled because of the fact that we don't do lab, that we can't do labs. Uh, the 205 course that I offer over the summer, I'm not going to do because I can't do any labs. And I think doing online virtual labs um, is not good for an organic class. Plus, I don't want students to have to take that class. And then when they go and transfer the course, the other school asks, well, were your labs done online, or did you actually do them? If they say online, they, they might not actually offer them. Um, so that's where the, at CSU is still offering biochem. Yeah, so here's the thing about uh, at, at CSU and our school. So, so the reason we're canceling is because our class and labs are wrapped into the same course. At CSU, you can take the course, but you don't have to take the lab. The lab is a separate course. So I don't know if they're going to be doing their lab courses at CSU. I don't know if any of you know, but my what I thought I heard was that all of the lecture stuff is still going, but none of the lab stuff is going. Which if, if we were able to split out our lab from our lecture, then we would run them. But the fact that we all combine the offering class, lab two, oh my goodness. All right, well, that would be interesting. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know. Oh, how that goes because I'd be curious um, so yeah so um, but anyways at the student ha at the student town hall thing uh, he's gonna talk about that um, and the other thing is I just want to let you guys know that I am very proud of you guys this is not easy one this is probably one of the hardest classes that, that you guys will take in your college um, uh, experience and you guys are sticking it out you guys are doing great you guys are coming to class asking questions um, so this is not easy, but I hand it, I tell you, I, I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, I can't believe that these guys are doing it, but, and you guys are doing great. So keep up the good work, keep doing it, keep coming to class. We're almost done three more weeks. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that. All right. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's easy. Uh, I'm making it easy because you guys are making it easy too. <laughs> so it kind of goes like two ways. So, uh, I just want to let you guys know that. All right. So, yep, no problem. Um, three, that gives me anxiety. What What do you mean by three gives you anxiety? Oh, weeks left. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're actually doing, as far as we're concerned, we're like we're like kind of on schedule. I don't feel like we're off schedule that much. We're right where we left off, but rather than being in class, 
I'm doing it online. Other than that, everything seems to be exactly the same. Um, and we just don't have to do the labs. So I feel like, like you said, for us, I think things are going good. All right. All right. Well, I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll do more problems. And um, I also, I posted on, on D2L the schedule for the next week, week and a half, I believe. So all that's up there. Okay. So take care. Yep. I'll see you tomorrow, Ashley.